to our channel. Today I am going to teach about uh, what is the difference between static CMOS and dynamic CMOS. We already discussed the operations of static CMOS and dynamic CMOS. So in this session I am going to discuss the difference between static and dynamic CMOS. I start with the basic structure. The basic structure of uh, static CMOS is so pull up network is connected to VDD and pull down network is connected to VSS so output is get from here so it's a basic structure so logically inputs are connected to pull up network and pull down network K input and K input so this logic function input is connected to pull down network and pull up network so this pull up network consists of PMOS transistor pull down network consists of NMOS transistor so it's a basic structure of static CMOS then come to dynamic CMOS so VDD the clocked PMOS transistor is connected to VDD then pull down network then clocked NMOS transistor so it's NMOS transistor the logic function input is connected to PD N it's not W it can pull down network so K input so it's a basic structure of static CMOS it's a basic structure of dynamic CMOS the next one number of transistor utilized number of transistors in static CMOS so PMOS transistor equal to K number so K number of PMOS transistor record so NMOS equal to K number of NMOS so how many input is connected in pulled up network and pulled down network that much of transistor is required to design the static CMOS in dynamic CMOS number of transistor so PMOS transistor only one so only one PMOS transistor is enough to execute the dynamic CMOS operation then NMOS so number of transistor record is NMOS transistor record is K plus 1 so this much of uh, NMOS transistors is needed so K is represent for uh, number of inputs that much of NMOS transistor record plus 1 represent this clock NMOS transistor point so more number of uh, PMOS transistor used in the static CMOS so due to more number of PMOS so size is increased in dynamic CMOS less number of PMOS that only one PMOS transistor size is decreased it's a third point next point is so due to the PMOS uh, more number of PMOS the capacitive loading capacitive loading is high so in dynamic CMOS capacitive loading is less then in this static CMOS the transistor is used to store the data transistor is used to store the data in dynamic CMOS capacitor is used to store the data temporarily 
in dynamic CMOS, the repository is used to store the data temporarily. Then next, in static CMOS, no need of pre-charge. In dynamic CMOS, pre-charge is procured. The next one. So due to more number of PMOS transistor, slower switching activity. Slower switching character. In dynamic CMOS, the switching character is fast. So faster switching character. The next one, static CMOS. So cascading. Cascading is no issue. No issue in static CMOS. In dynamic CMOS, some issue, some issue present in cascading operation. So this is the basic uh, difference between static and dynamic CMOS. So first one is structure, then next one, number of transistors utilized in the static CMOS and dynamic CMOS, then more number of PMOS transistor is make an impact in size of the circuit on capacity loading, then transistor is used to store the data in dynamic CMOS, capacitor is used to store the data temporarily, there is no need of pre-charge, here pre-charge circuit is recovered, then slower switching character, faster switching character, Cascading is no issue. Some issues creating in a cascading operation in dynamic CMOS. So I hope you understand the concept very well. If you are watching first time in my video, kindly subscribe and support us to make a lot of videos. Thank you.